A major meteor shower peaks and we explore the ghostly remnants of a dead star. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see in the night sky for July of 2025. I'm Michael Martin and this is Late Night Astronomy. We begin our journey into space this month with a major meteor shower. The southern delta awkwards are best viewed from the southern hemisphere, but regardless of where you live, you'll be able to see more meteors than normal on the night that they peak. Whether you're a veteran stargazer or just getting into this hobby, Sky Safari 7 is one of the best tools that you can use to go out to learn and navigate the night sky. Let's load it up and go outside on the night of July 29th into the early morning of July 30th, when the Delta Awkwards peak. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere like me, go outside around midnight and face towards the Southeast. In this part of the sky, you will come across the constellation Aquarius, where these meteors will appear to shoot from. Just to the left of this meteor shower, you'll also be able to see Saturn and Neptune rising in the night sky as well. My friends in the Southern Hemisphere will have a much better time seeing meteors from this shower. You'll be able to go outside around 10 p.m. on the night of July 29th to begin your views. You'll find Aquarius in the east and will be able to watch the meteor shower rise high into the sky as it peaks in the early morning of July 30th. The farther south you live and the darker your sky conditions, the more meteors you'll see with rates of 25 meteors per hour under ideal conditions for the Southern Hemisphere, and perhaps 10 to 15 meteors per hour from the Northern Hemisphere. Let's move from the atmosphere of the Earth to the surface of the Moon. Beginning with its phases this month, you'll be able to go out to see a first quarter Moon on July 2nd. Full Moon July 10th, last quarter Moon July 17th, and a new Moon July 24th. The Moon makes several close passes to planets and deep sky objects in the night sky this month, beginning with a pass by Saturn and Neptune on July 16th, M45 July 20th, Venus on the 21st, Jupiter on the 23rd, and Mars on July 28th. Last month I spent an evening hunting down the landing site of Apollo 15 near the impressive Montes Apenninus Mountains, in a location known as the Hadley Plains. At roughly 200 times magnification, I was able to see some of the most prominent land features of this area and can make out some of the larger land features made famous by the pictures and videos that came out of this mission. If you've been out to observe the moon or anything else recently, please let us know what your experience was like seeing these objects in the comment section below. From the surface of the moon, we now head out into our solar system to explore the planets. Mercury is going to dip below the horizon early this month, leaving just Mars in the evening sky, and that's going to be a difficult target as well, with your best views being early in July, before it gets too low to the horizon. Shifting to the early morning sky, Saturn and Neptune are paired nicely with each other throughout the month. At the start of the month, they'll be at a nice height above the horizon after 3 a.m., and both will show up in the same field of view using a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars. Also early in the month, you'll find a close pairing of Venus and Uranus as they rise above the horizon just before sunrise. By the end of the month, Saturn will be well positioned high in the sky starting around 1 a.m., and the king of the planets, Jupiter, will just start to make its way above the horizon, leading to some nice views for us in the coming months. With no major comets to observe this month, let's leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space to take a look at some incredible objects that you can see with the naked eye, a pair of binoculars, and a telescope. Getting away from as much light pollution as you possibly can, and that does include the moon not being out, is going to lead to the best views for these faint, fuzzy, deep sky objects. Let's begin our journey this month by going outside about an hour and a half after sunset and facing towards the east. As you look up, you'll come across the constellation Lyra and one of the brightest stars in the night sky, Vega. 
at a distance of 25 light years, my first memory of this star is from the movie Contact, and ever since then I've been fascinated by this region of space. Who knows what signal we might get from this star system while you're out observing it this month. After locating Vega and enjoying its views with the naked eye and a pair of binoculars, turn your attention to two stars that are actually four, Epsilon Lyra, the Double Double. With the naked eye, it will probably appear as one star unless you're under excellent seeing conditions. With a pair of binoculars, it will split into two stars, but with a telescope at roughly 100 to 150 times magnification, these two stars will split into four stars, making them the famous double-double. But our main event this month is a target that I get excited to see around this time every year, M57, the Ring Nebula. This planetary nebula formed after a star very similar probably to our own sun exhausted its hydrogen fuel, which created instabilities that caused the outer layers of this star to be expelled in energetic pulses out into space. The expanding gaseous shell forms a planetary nebula. With a pair of binoculars under ideal conditions, I've just barely been able to pick out the shape of the ring nebula, but almost all of my observations have come from a telescope between 100 and 250 times magnification. This one is a treat, and its ghostly shape and core keep me coming back to it every single year. Thanks for joining us on our journey through the night sky. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what questions you have and what you're getting out to observe and image in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.